Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the Law of Attraction Life Coaching Podcast. My name is Laura, if you don't know me already, and welcome back to the channel. If you do know me, thank you ever so much for subscribing. Thank you for watching my videos, and I hope that you're enjoying them. If you guys have any comments um, or any videos that you'd like some advice on, please leave a comment below, uh, and I'll happily get back to you with a podcast talking about some advice that I think for your problem. So, if you are new to the channel, please go down and click that little subscribe button and click the bell so you can get notifications as to when I've got a new video out. I try and release my podcast at least once a week, normally on a Sunday. (sighs) I'm sorry guys, I'm trying to become more organised with this and I actually get a time and a day when I'm releasing these things, but... just not very disciplined with it at the moment but I promise I'm going to do better because as I said to you last week I have quit my job I am going down to 0.5 a part-time job again uh, so I will be able to give you more time oh sounded like Boris Johnson then I'm going to give you more time and get Brexit done let's not go into that (laughs) okay that's one for the outtakes (laughs) Tonight I wanted to talk to you a bit about love, okay? Now, last week's podcast was about relationships and actually about how you can find yourself um, seeking sex for validation. And if you haven't watched that or if that rings true, please go back and listen to it because um, it's, you know, quite interesting, I hope. (laughs) Um, And I had some really good responses uh, in regards to it. So if you, if that's your kind of thing, go and have a look at that one from last week. I'll try and leave like a little card thing or something up here if I work out how to do that technologically. Um, But I wanted to talk to you about how you can find love. Now, a lot of people want to find love because they feel like something is missing from inside themselves. They feel that if they found love, they would then find that missing piece, find that missing puzzle piece to allow them to become, you know, a flourishing person, to thrive, to be happy, to, you know, live out their fairy tale. And what I want to say is, really, if you don't feel that on your own, the last thing you should do is go and find a relationship. I talk a lot about um, like the energy you emit from yourself. Now, humans are like barometers for energy. We feel the energy of somebody else. If you don't believe me, go into a room with people that hate you <laughs> and feel the energy that they put out to you to feel like, oh, they don't want you in here. Um, that gut feeling that you get about somebody where you think that they're not a good person, where they, where you shouldn't befriend them, that is you picking up on energy, unspoken kind of very low level energy fields that are emitted by human beings. Human beings are in effect electromagnetic beings and we put out, you know, our, our auras stretch sort of up to 10 feet outside of ourselves. So if you think you could be in a room with somebody and you're standing inside their aura and you could pick up on the vibrations that, that people have. And we are like magnets for each other. You know, we pull into our lives people who vibrate on the same levels as ourselves. And when you feel bad, you pull in other people who feel bad. You know, when you feel like you're half a person, what do you think you're going to pull in? Another half a person, which doesn't make a whole. It makes a relationship of two very broken people, okay? You don't have another half, Okay, you're a whole person. You were born alone uh, as a single person, as one, and you will die alone as a single person, as one. You don't find your soulmate and then that's it. Like, you know, two pieces of Lego stuck together for the rest of your life. All of a sudden, you're a whole unit. It's not, that's not truthful. So what you need to understand is actually before you can find a fulfilling and loving relationship, one that you deserve to have if that's what you want, and one that is truly fulfilling as it should be in your life, you need to learn to love yourself 
in the way that you want to be loved. Now, I find that the universe, God, the creator, Gaia, whatever you want to call it, has got a great sense of humor. And actually, when you, the things that you have to try and want to have in your life, you have to do for yourself first before you're allowed to have them. It's like abundance. You have to feel abundant before you can get abundance. And that is when you're poor scratching for a penny, you know. It's tough, and it's like a, it's like a sick joke. It's like, what? You want me to feel abundant and I got no money? <laughs> That's it. And it's the same thing. Oh, you want me to love, but I can't love myself. I can't do that. I don't know why I'm turning into, I don't know who that is. Barbara Streisand, Bette Miller, I'm not sure. Um, but you, what you need to recognize is actually you can't draw in somebody that is going to love you the way you want to be loved and to fulfill this idea of like, you know, a Prince Charming or your other half or your soulmate or your twin flame, you're not going to get that until you love yourself first. Because what you do when you love yourself first is you model to other people how you should be loved. So if you're somebody who's coming from a point of view that you are unworthy of love, that you're unlovable, that you're a half person seeking this other person within your life as a soulmate, that whatever you, you know, put upon to yourself, that you're too ugly, too, um, too thick, too fat, too dumb, whatever your thing that you're saying or you're not enough of or you're too much of, you need to shed that skin and learn to accept yourself just as you are and love yourself just as you are. And this starts with getting up in the morning and telling yourself that I am okay just the way I am, that I appreciate myself, that I love myself, that I'm kind, I'm good, I am honorable, beautiful, perfect, just as I am. And until you can begin to do this for yourself, actually every relationship that you have will never be enough. Because even if you somehow, by miracle, manage to attract somebody that loves you for who you are and sees you for who you are, and says to you, you're beautiful, you're wonderful, I love you, and they love you with every fiber of their being, you won't be able to feel that love wholeheartedly. You won't be able to understand it. You won't be able to be present within that love because you haven't taken the time to love yourself, and so you won't understand why somebody else could love you. And so this chain reaction comes when somebody says they love you, you don't believe them. And you won't believe them because you're modeling to them that love is, for you, self-deprecation, self-loathing, self-hatred, self-undervaluing. All of these really detrimental things. And... When you learn to love yourself, you don't need anyone. And that need is the thing that skews off your vibration and brings in people who are detrimental to your life, to your heart and to your mental health. Something that's really important when you don't love yourself is to be alone. Because you don't match your vibration, your bad vibration, with somebody else's bad vibration. And when that happens, what you get is this very jagged, hard relationship. Where one person says, I'm not lovable. And pushes that out to other people. And then the other person says, I'm not lovable either. And then you get these two really detrimental energies that are like butting heads all the time. And it's like, but I love you. And the other person can't be loved. You can't be loved. You can't really fully receive love when you can't love yourself. And so what you need to do is you need to start there. Now, people who don't love themselves seek out others to fill that hole, to make them feel loved. And it's hollow. It's not worth having. You know, it's fool's gold. 
Because you think to yourself in that moment, somebody loves me. But then within that moment, you know that how could they love you? Because you're such a bad person. You're so disgusting, unlovable, unworthy. And so you take the love that they've given you and you pull it to pieces and you hold it up to the light and you look at it and you're like, there's no way this person could love me because I am so unworthy. And so you push it and you pull it and you pull it and you tear it and you rip it and you look at it and you examine it and by the time you've done that what you are left with is something that is not worth having anymore. And if that person genuinely loved you in the first place, they're going to give up. They'll give up real quick because they'll say to you, I tell you time and time again how much I love you and you don't believe me and you throw my love back in my face. And this is what happens when you get, by, by very much luck, if you find somebody that loves you and you don't love yourself, you will push, you will push, you will destroy the love that they give you. Because you can't understand, you can't fathom how anyone could love you. And so you can do nothing with, with that love, with that gift of love other than destroy it. Unintentionally, desperately unintentionally, but truthfully, it's very difficult. Or if you're unlucky, you get paired with somebody like yourself and you go down this twisted route of challenging each other's love. I challenge you to still love me if I do this. Or would they still feel that way if I do that? And you push and you push and if you're really unlucky, if you're both really, really stubborn, which I see very common, really stubborn and you lock horns and you lock horns from day one to day end until one of you dies because you don't want to be the one that gives up because I love you more than you love me. Do you? Truth of it is that you don't love yourself. You can't accept their love. You don't understand it. And the relationships built on lies and insecurity. Narcissism a lot of the time. So how do you find love? The first person that you love is you. And that's not easy. I mean, I, I'm talking from somebody that hated herself so much, I thought if I commit suicide, the world will be a better place and nobody will have to suffer me. I've had people that have fallen in love with me and I didn't even know it because it was never on my radar that anybody would even ever fall in love with me. I've unintentionally hurt people because I just didn't even recognize they gave a shit. Because I hated myself so much. So you start with you and you say today I'm going to get up and I'm going to be my own boyfriend, girlfriend. I'm going to get up and I'm going to wine and dine and I'm going to treat myself and I'm going to love myself like I would my partner. Because you've got a lot of love to give but the reason why you've got so much to give is because you're not taking any for yourself. And it's so important that you turn that voice around in your head that says that you are not worthy, that you are a bad person, that you are unlovable, that you're shit, that you're ugly, that you're too fat, too thin, too stupid, too dumb, whatever. Too loud, too boring, too old, too young, too something, not enough. The relationship of love starts with yourself when you get up in the morning and you say, hey, you, in the mirror, you're awesome. You've gone through shit and you get up and you keep trying. Well done. And yeah, 
it will feel hollow to begin with. And yes, it will feel like you're telling a lie. And you'll start saying it, you'll say, you're awesome, and the thing inside your head will go, bullshit! You're a liar, you're not awesome, you're this, you're that, you're the other. And at that point you go, hey, stop that now because we're not doing this anymore. And yeah, you'll feel schizophrenic and you'll feel like a maniac and you'll be thinking, is this working? I feel like an idiot. What am I doing? But it does work. And it starts with you waking up and saying, hey, you're all right. You've got nice eyes. You're pretty smart. You're good at maths or science. You're kind. You're funny. Because there's nothing really intrinsically wrong with you, is there? Really, the only thing that's wrong with you is that you think that there's something wrong with you. As I said, the universe has got a sixth sense of humour quite a lot of the time. So I want you to have a relationship with yourself. It sounds quite fruity, doesn't it? But I want you to get up tomorrow morning and I want you to look in the mirror and I want you to say whatever your name is. Laura, you're beautiful. You're a good person. You're lovable. You're worthy. You are good enough. You're kind, you're sweet, you're funny. You're interesting, you're intellectual, whatever. You pick out the qualities of yourself that you resonate with, that feel truthful, that you can be proud of, whatever that might be. Because even if you hate yourself wholeheartedly, you know and I know that not everything within you is wrong. When I hated myself, I could probably still say, hmm, I got nice eyes. There's something. There's something there. And there's something there for you too. So begin by having a relationship with yourself. When you foster an environment of love in your soul, in your body, for yourself first, this need, this dire need to be loved by somebody else goes down. And then what happens is you don't go with anyone who wants you because you're desperate for love. You go to people you want because you deserve love, which is massive. That's massive. And because you love yourself, this need, this desire goes down. I love you too. Little face says she loves me. I love you. And you become much more secure in yourself, in your energy. And people come up to you and they're like, hey, do you want to? And you're like, nah, not really. I feel your energy and you don't, wouldn't love me. You don't, you don't love me. You know, draw a line between that. People want to fuck you and people want to love you. <laughs> They're not the same thing. But when you don't love yourself, they feel like the same thing. Because even that hollow, sticky piece of shitty candy cane that that guy's offering you, <laughs> no pun intended, <laughs> that sticks to the back of your teeth and gives you tartar. It tastes sometimes as sweet as the strawberries when you're hungry, but do they nourish you the same? No. No, they don't. So go for the strawberries. And say no to the candy canes. Because that way is hollow and this way is good. This way nourishes and that way decays. 
but it starts with you having the confidence to say no. And the confidence to say no comes from the fact that you love yourself and you don't need anyone. When somebody says to you, hey, do you just want to be? Do you want to be my side bitch? Do you want to be the person that I call up for a booty call on a Friday night? Do you want to be the girl I flirt with when I'm feeling down? Do you want to be the person that makes me feel better when I feel unlovable? And you're like, hmm, no thank you. Because I deserve more. Because I love myself. And because unless you're going to come to the table with something worth having that I give my time and my energy to you, I am not interested. And when you begin to say that, when you begin to do that, oh my God, it's so powerful because you suddenly realize that you don't need their shit and their shit causes more problems. And when you split your energy and you go, I'll serve you. I'll look after you, but I'm not going to look after myself. You suddenly realize that all oh, those times you've done that, it was hollow and it didn't make you feel good. It made you feel worse. And them coming up and telling you that you're sexy, you're cute, you're funny, this, all this crap. It didn't make you feel good anyway. It was an instant gratification that was hollow as hell. And it was like a ball boy. It lasted for a minute, but then it was broken and hollow inside. And so you decide to avoid those things and go after the things that genuinely make you feel good inside. To get up in the morning and speak kindly to yourself, to be your own lover. And I don't mean in a raunchy, sexy way, but if you want it to be in a raunchy, sexy way, go for it. Love, honey, it's Black Friday, baby, they got 50% off. You do this. <laughs> you do your thing. But don't devalue yourself for the hollow affections of somebody that doesn't love you for who you are. Because when you do that, you devalue yourself further. And then you can't love yourself because you treat yourself badly. And it's a catch-22 cycle, 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 vicious circle. So when you decide to get up in the morning and you say, do you know what, there's nothing really wrong with you. You're all right just the way you are. I don't know why I've been such a bitch to you for so long. And you think, I'm going to go with that today. And you watch yourself. You watch yourself in here. You watch your voice. You watch that little voice. And the second that it tries to berate you or be mean or be cruel or be a bitch, you say, well, uh, uh, no, we're not doing that today. Today, you're being nice. And for every nasty thing that it says, you say three things better. If it says, mm, you shouldn't have said that, you look like an idiot then. You say, yeah, well I was quite smart this morning when I remembered this thing and I said that thing and I did this thing well. A little voice will go, hmm, okay. And then when it says, hmm, he thinks you're ugly. And you go, no. I don't think he did. I just think he was thinking my, my lipstick was nice and I think that I'm funny and I think I'm cool. He was probably thinking that my hair looked good today. And you shut that little voice up and little by little you take back control of your own mind because the voices, both the voices are yours. You're not a maniac. You're not stuck having to deal with things that you can't control. This voice is you and this voice is you. It's just that you are not disciplined enough to tell this voice that is always at you. Blah, blah, blah. You're not worthy. You're not good enough. You're not kind enough. All this shit. You're not disciplined enough to say, hey, screw you, man. I'm good enough. But when you start to challenge it, oh, how potent that is. That is so potent. And you challenge it, and you challenge it, and you challenge it, and before you know, after a month, it stopped being mean to you. And after two months, it's completely silent. And after three months, it's, in, it's agreeing with you. I say, damn, I'm looking fine today. And the voice goes, mm-mm, yes you are, girlfriend. Well, what you need to do is love yourself first. 
and by loving yourself first you can model to other people how you should be loved and what is the kindest way for them to love you and if they don't love you and they don't model good love to you, you say, there's the door. And you know how to, you know what is good love and what is bad love because you've loved yourself enough to recognize the difference. And so when somebody says cruel things to you like, hey dude, nah, I kicked that bitch in the ass who was in my head, I'm not gonna have you do it to me outside either. And it's so powerful. It's so potent, guys, and it's worth it. It sounds like a lot of hard work. It's like, mm, I want, I gotta, I gotta be celibate. I've gotta stop dating. I gotta be nice to myself. I've gotta tell the thing inside my head that I'm worthy. Holy shit, that sounds like more, more agony, like more effort than just going around banging every man I find until whatever. <laughs> but it's not. And one is forever lasting, you know. Once you have learned to love yourself, you don't go back down again. You just love yourself and you begin to implement good habits like self-care and good eating habits and good sleeping habits and doing the things that you love and looking after yourself and being a good person in the world where you're kinder and you're spreading that revolution of joy. And, you know, if you've got children, then you model to your children what it means to be uh, a person that loves himself and that trickles on you know it feeds into the next generation and then they show and and then before we know it we've got instead of a generation of people who are harmed and narcissistic and and inferior and have complexes of not being enough and people going after this like you know generation of Instagram worthy bullshit they just go nah I'm good enough just as I am and if you don't love me just as I am, then that's cool. Because I love myself and I don't need you. And when you don't need somebody, you want somebody, you pick the right person. You know? When you are good on your own and you can take or leave someone, there's not that need. You don't need somebody to make you feel, feel good. You don't need somebody to take you out. You don't need anything. And then the loves that you have become much more stable because you're not in a situation where it's like, please, God, don't leave me, I'll die without you. No, it's like, okay, I love you and I like it if our paths continued together, but if they didn't, I'd be all right. Because I love myself before you came and I love myself after you came. And that's so potent. And it's so empowering. And if I can do that, you can do that. So, get up tomorrow morning. Start with, you are worthy. Right, you beautiful devils. Thank you for listening, as always. If this is your first time here, please do subscribe to my channel. The support that you give me allows me to continue making videos and at some point, hopefully, will allow me to earn some money off of these podcasts, which means that, again, I continue with my book writing and coaching people and doing everything I can to make sure that your real world gets better. I love you all very much. I appreciate the support that you've given me, no end. And for all of the new subscribers that have subscribed over the last few weeks, I am blown away because I had like 30 new subscribers in like the last month. And that has been like, <laughs> that's a lot. And I really appreciate the support. I really appreciate you subscribing. I love to hear from you guys. So please leave a comment below because I do adore uh, hearing from you. I will reply to all the comments that I see. Um, and yeah, just thank you, thank you, thank you because I am really appreciative. And although my channel is small at the moment, I hope that it will get bigger and bigger and I will be able to help more and more people which means that any pain that I have ever suffered as a young person was worth it. This is my pathway and I thank you for being part of it. Love yourselves, look after yourselves, 
and be your own boyfriend or girlfriend. Good night. Tonight, I wanted to talk to you about finding love, okay? Last week, we talked about, sorry, obviously, little face is gonna come in, cause some trouble. She hears mommy talking, she's like, I gotta get involved in the action. So, there's another one of the outtakes. And, <laughs> every time you coming in, are you coming in or are you just going to block the camera? You're coming in. Okay. Are you going to sit down? Do you want to say hi to everyone? Say hello. Okay. That's it. You're in now. Okay. You're going to sit down? Everything I do, anything I do, if I'm playing music, she wants to come in and be in the film. If I'm making a music video, she's here. If I'm doing a podcast, she's on it. She loves my work, what can I say? She's my number one fan. <laughs> I have no idea what I was saying now. <laughs>